Hi there, this is Garrow from the Music Zoo, and I'm here to talk to you today about a very controversial subject, and that is heavily relict guitars. So specifically what I'm here to talk to you about today is a run of guitars that's exclusive to our store that we've dubbed the Hacksaw Relics. So we have these in the works with all the master builders at the Fender Custom Shop, and I'm going to start with the story for you. So the inspiration for this run goes back to 2018 or maybe 2019 when we took a Music Zoo field trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to see the Play It Loud exhibit, where they had the original guitars from folks like Jimmy Page, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Dwayne Allman, uh, Eddie Van Halen. A specific instrument at that exhibit caught my eye, and that was an ovation bass that was owned and played by Kim Gordon of Sonic Youth. And it was just heavily worn, the bass was all beat up, and it had a ton of different modifications and a ton of different parts on it, some clearly from a hardware store, like not even guitar parts on it. And it kind of like struck a bell in my mind where I was like, let's combine some heavily modified things that you see on vintage guitars and artist-owned guitars with our Ultimate Relic treatment. So for those of you that don't know, the Ultimate Relic is another exclusive run we've been doing with the Fender Master Builders for a number of years, which is like the very highest level of relicking that you get on a guitar. So the paint's almost completely worn off, like the Rory Gallagher or the SRV, but then we do them in strats and tellies and custom colors and stuff like that. So I kind of took that basis and then started doing some really heavy modifications that I've kind of seen in the vintage market. You see some guitars being offered with it. So let's jump into these two that I have available here. So we'll start off with this one. So it's kind of like a mid-60s blonde Telecaster, not that dissimilar to the guitar that Mike Bloomfield used with the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. So the thing that I had Jason Smith do on this one is obviously beat it all to heck. But then he added for us a Stratocaster Tremolo. So it looks as though someone had routed out the back to add the claw and springs and stuff like that, leaving the footprint of the original Telecaster bridge there and visible on the body but the Telecaster bridge pickup is direct mounted into the body. We added a humbucker, again, direct mounted into the body, but with the pick guard on it. All the controls are there, your normal three-way switch and stuff like that. And then as you can see, it's really beat up. Next up, we have one from our friend Kyle McMillan. He's been doing a really killer job with these guitars. So as you can see, this one has a whole heck of a lot of wear on it, really beat up. So the thing that I had the modification to this one done as you can see clearly, it's got the addition of two direct mount, I believe they're EVH Wolfgang pickups, into the neck and middle position. Then you have the normal uh, Telecaster bridge pickup, although we did go with a very hot version of that pickup here. And as you can see, a specific request that I made was that the pickguard not be included on the guitar, although you do have the holes where the pickguard would have mounted. And something that he did a really great job with is the rest of the paint is all faded and aged, but then you can see clearly where the pickguard would have covered that blonde finish and not faded or aged quite as much as the rest of the guitar. You still do have the footprint of where that bridge cover would have gone over it. So this one is a 51 no caster, so you do have some of those historic features like the flathead screws on the neck plate and also on the strap button. The maple neck is very heavily worn, nice and fat. And then what we did was we added the Spurzel locking tuners to it, which you see on a lot of kind of like modified guitars from the 60s and 70s. So these guitars are really cool for a number of reasons, I think. You get some unique features on them. Another thing that I like is that they're sort of like those modded vintage guitars that you see. Um, and although they are fairly expensive, you know, a lot of them range between eight and $10,000 on up, depending on what the spec is. It is a master built instrument. And I feel like a lot of those vintage guitars that you see being offered, even with heavy modifications for original 51 no casters or 63 telecasters, they're still very highly priced guitars. So although they're very expensive, I think this is a cool access point to some like really radical kind of like relicking and stuff like that. So hopefully while you're watching this video, these two guitars are in stock and you can click the links and check them out. If they are not, definitely give our sales team a call because we have a bunch of different guitars like this on order, not only Telecasters, but also Stratocasters with all the different master builders and stuff like that. Um, also subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this and follow us on our socials at the Music Zoo.